Are we back? We're back. We are back. We're back. We're back with a special guest. We very special guest. And I get the special, special guest chair. You get the middle middle seat. <laughs> Which is not so good on an airplane, but I'll so, totally take it here. So for those don't know that don't know, and if you don't know, shame on you. This is the keeper, Jen Cooper, from yes. Keeper Notes. The keeper herself. Yes. Yes, and I'm from speaking in third person. Previously <laughs> from Houston Dash Broadcasts. And previously the Keeper Note Soccer Show. And previously the Keeper Note Soccer Show. I ended show. last year, and I'm so glad you guys are doing this. So somebody <laughs> is doing this. You're, well, you're, you're carrying the torch. We're trying. The organization trying. needed somebody to put a little bit of pressure on them. So. Definitely. Oh. Definitely. Ooh, that's a nice segue. That's pressure. A very nice segue. Pressure. Segue. So but we had another segue planned. We did. We did. Okay. We did. So what's your segue? Well, uh, we were going to talk about women's soccer, but, you know, of course, Josh is not here. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, it all ties into the fact that I can't talk about him when he's not here. Where did he go? Well, know. he'll hear it later. But anyway, I, I, I had to bring up the fact that it's like, wait, he wants to step off the segment that's about women's soccer and he wants to support support men's soccer where players miss games because they can't shave their legs properly. To be fair, that player probably wasn't very experienced at it. He popped a pimple while shaving. And so, then so infected. why, so why are you, why are you doing that <laughs> for a Champions League game? We're we're bashing uh, you, John. Yeah. It helps him with accidents, aerodynamics. It's shaving aerodynamics. accidents preventing game appearances has never happened in women's soccer. <laughs> you know have to watch it back anyway, later. We're we'll have to watch on. it back later. Yes, we're moving on. So. Um, let me first start off with some positives, if you want to call them positives, and then we'll roll into the state of the dash, I guess we could put it. Okay. Um, first off, the dash did make some moves. It was A lot of it was during the whole Harvey fiasco. Um, they did move... <laughs> I didn't know we would call it a fiasco, okay. Wow. <laughs> they, um, they did move one of their probably bigger name players that's not named Carly Lloyd um, in Morgan Bryan. They traded her August 30th. Uh, for cash feature considerations for um and Christy I'm, Nunes. There you go. I was gonna yeah, I can just name. explain it all. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So we got that under the wire. The f roster freeze deadline mm. was actually August 28th. So they yes. didn't have all the the T's crossed and I's dotted to announce it until the 30th. But that did happen right right under the roster freeze. There was a lot of frenzy the last 10 days of August oh, yeah. be mm -hmm. because of that. Not just with the dash. Now. We are now the first team that has traded away a player picked with a number one overall pick. First first team to do that. You're trading away someone who is future of the U.S. national team, won mm. a Women's World Cup. But on the other side, you're trading away someone who has been injured a lot, yeah. who we have struggled in the midfield to get a good cohesion between Morgan Bryan, Carly Lloyd, Andresinha, the other people. Mm -hmm. We're bringing in a player who maybe you don't know her name very well, but she comes in with 15 senior US national team caps. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, she just not she yep. hasn't been capped in the Ellis era, but Christy Mias is like she's played every season. How old is she? Uh, so she's five years out of school, so she's twenty yeah, six. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's yeah. she's she's in her prime. She's played every season of the league. She's hungry. She I think she gets I hope that she gets that she's wanted here. And I mean and, and she started uh, immediately so you can look at it both sides it's always frustrating to lose a player who's kind of the face of the team I'm mean, you know like like in the in the suites mm -hmm. the dynamo you've got men and there's a picture of Ricardo Clark and women's restroom you got the picture of Morgan Bryan and my first thought was oh we're gonna have to change the banner you know? well but it's kind of like when you know, to, to <laughs> help with the comparison it's kind of like when the dynamo traded away Brad Davis mm -hmm. yeah you know granted yeah. Morgan Bryan had not been with the dash that long right. but you consider the amount of time the dash have been here it, it, it equals and out. anytime Yes. You, can, you can easily identify a player as part of the 2015 Women's World Cup team. Yes, that, that, absolutely. That, that's, that's, it's, just, it's a lot. that's just an easy thing. And losing Lydia Williams, I know some people were surprised, but that's not as big a surprise because if she's the starting keeper for Australia and they are very fierce about what they want to do in 2019, oh, she's got to be at a club where she's starting. She absolutely. lost her starting role to Jane Campbell. She's got to be somewhere where she's starting. And, and, let's and be, Bianca Henniger's back as a, as a, as a backup. So mm. And let's be know. honest, Jane Campbell has absolutely stepped up to the plate and has played exceptionally well and has proven she deserves oh, to be that Oh, she has keeper. rocked it. And what's funny, if, if you go back to her first game, which I'm sure all those players want to forget, hmm. but, you know, she let in five goals. And, yes. and granted, not all the goals are all the keeper's fault. But so think about it. Your rookie, your first game, after your first game, your GAA is five. Yeah. Your GAA is five, yeah. okay? So now at this point in the season, her GAA is down to like 1.2, and she is in like the top five in the league. So she's rocking it. 
Yeah, no. On you a guys total are text messages. No, on a total <laughs> side note outside of women's soccer, Atlanta is up seven nothing against New England. And that's not a football score, that is a soccer score. Yes. Yeah, Atlanta I, I did not mean to interrupt you, Jen. Oh no, but that's after great. That, I'm like, what? That, no, that's totally <laughs> worth interrupting for. And, and I wish I knew off the top of my head, like, what's the biggest shutout in MLS history? Because that could be Oh, that's got to be close. I know. <laughs> yeah. I think most goals in a game is nine. Yeah. Yeah. How, how many Five, minutes four. in? Oh, how they were minutes? at halftime, and it was, what, three, no, four nothing? Yeah. Well, yeah, but uh, they're probably 60, 70 minutes in right now. Okay, so they still all hail Atlanta. Time. All hail Atlanta. Oh, man, they're just Do you guys know how to right do now. expansion? Wow. Clearly. Well, they brought in the right coach. But Clearly they need a women's team, too. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and just walk Jen right into the MLS discussion as well. And then we'll right to so before, before we get into our main topic, I, I know you have some ins. What are the odds of Philly getting a team? Because I know there, there, were, there was a big push on them getting one. From what I've heard, very little. Okay. Um, we know from the MLS side that the union is a house in disorder, right? Oh, yes. Right. <laughs> right. You, okay. you don't have to ask me about that. <laughs> so... so, so Unless the union put their house in order, they're not in a position to, Yeah, you know. But I guess my thinking is, with the history that Philly has in women's and soccer, that's what I was they would have been the one of the first ones. Well, it's, it's not just a history thing, because you've got to think about it. It's not like the league sits down at a table and goes, where should we put teams? Yeah, yeah. They are taking yeah. inquiries and requests and bids. And when we know we've had, like, 15 different entities reaching out, mm. and clearly none of them is Philly, we are not going to put a team in Philly. Yeah. That being said, I think it's a rich place to put a team if you have the right investor, because the trivia that I do online, you know, giveaways, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the podcast, and I get so many people emailing me that are from the greater Pennsylvania area. So so well, I know, and, and what we knew with Sons of Ben, that well, what they had 5,000 members mm -hmm. two years before Philly started. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I would love to see a team in Philly. And, it, you know, growing up in Delaware, there was more women playing soccer than men. So yeah. it, it's not like the, the Mid-Atlantic is not a hotbed for women's yeah. soccer. Well, and you, and you look at the bigger picture, too, of being so close to... Um, Rutgers, where Sky Blue plays. Mm -hmm. You're not far from Maryland, where Washington Square plays. Library. That's like, like it, it's kind of the same thing as setting that triumvirate in the Pacific yep. Northwest of, of Vancouver, yeah. Seattle, Portland. Yeah. Geographically, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but yeah, totally. So let's go ahead and dive into the dash. Uh, first off, they did lose this past weekend. Uh, one nothing to North Carolina, who is still the best team in the league, if I'm correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no one's going to touch North Carolina. No. Um, they have a chance to set a league record for for most wins in a season. They have a chance to tie the league record for most points in a season. Mm -hmm. What's funny, they've gone this far. They haven't tied at all this season. Wow. Yeah, I think they're Flick. sixteen. And, yeah, they're sixteen <laughs> and five. Yeah. It's like, damn. So I was impressed watching that game. How well our defense did against a team that has been rocking it mm. and even after the game I'm like wait how did we only lose that 1-0 and then I mean the thought is well we'll duh Jane Campbell yeah. um, we didn't sit back and just let them attack I yeah. mean we, we were we were, we were in that game and you can see I mean I hope if you watch you can see what Christy Mewis you know was, was bringing to, the, ta to mm. the attack and you also have to think about not having Carly Lloyd not having Kaylee Ohai Ouch. Yeah. That, that's pretty hard. I never like to use injuries as, oh, uh, we, we would have done better. But you have to keep in mind with women's soccer, your rosters are only 20 players. Yep. What's mm -hmm. MLS now, 28? Well, that's 20 if we actually signed additional players. Right. We, we, actually, we, actually, we actually did We yeah. actually did fill we in to 20. the 20, yeah. Okay. Um, but, yeah. necessity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... So you've got you've got such a small pool to start oh, with. Yeah. So one big loss like that, that's not easy to replace, especially you know with with budget constraints. Mm. Um, so we are officially eliminated. We're actually eliminated before that game kicked off. Yes, We're eliminated right. by the prior result. But they stayed in it. They looked fierce. I, you know that that made me proud. Yeah, they never they never back down. Yeah. yeah. That's and and they know at least the American players know that Jill Ellis is watching, and she's made it pretty clear. That you know your call-ups are going to be based on league form, and you know Jane, as, it, Jane, as it should be. And Jane got the call yeah. for these upcoming friendlies. Boy, I wish MLS and USSF did the same thing for the men's soccer mm. team. That's mm. like I said, like you've said before. That's that's enough for another podcast. Oh, hey, you know you know that wife swap show? Yeah. We, should have, <laughs> we should have a coach swap show. Oh, so man. Bruce Arena goes into the U.S. women's. Do you really want to see the U.S. women's national team fail utterly and not even make the next? I World think Cup? it would be hysterical. At least Dallas. <laughs> 
it's like it's hey. like too friendly. It's like too friendly. It's oh, not, okay. We're not going to qualify. Ellis, no, 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 then you take Ellis, qualifiers. then you take Ellis. Ellis and, and, would and still have the U.S. qualify right now. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's let's give her the Jan let's give her the January cupcake. There you go, camp the cupcake, cupcake. The camp cupcake. Thing. Yeah. But I just think oh, man. that would be such a funny, funny swap. So anyway, one of the other things you're going to leave that, this segment. Yeah, well, uh, you were doing just fine on your own. No. Uh, so one of the things that obviously was a big deal this week, uh, we had the dash with the rescheduled match against. You're going to have to help me. North Carolina. Carolina. North yes. Carolina. Uh, that's rescheduled, and it's rescheduled for a midweek game October 11th, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, October, September 27th. September, September 27th, 27th yeah. Yeah. thank you. Um, which is, by the way, the same night as a Dynamo home match. Um, so it was rescheduled for September 27th, and this week they announced that they were playing that match at RGV. And there were a number of hardcore fans and, you know, diehard fans is what I call them, um, that were extremely And I think upset. some casual fans, too, not just diehard I, I fans. think that's fair. I think yeah. that's fair. You know, fans, fans in general, um, uh, you know, of the Houston Dash in particular, that were upset over the decision by the Dash to move this game to RGV um, when there were reportedly available potential other venues. I don't know how accurate necessarily that might be, um, but that's what I've heard is that there were there were probably other venues available. I the, the real question is, were those even really even considered, or is that just something that, you know, from a fan perspective, we don't know and we never will know. Um, you know, but Kennedy did come out, and there was a statement, and it was made by Kennedy. It wasn't made by the Houston Dash. You call that a statement related to huh? saying that. Saying they <laughs> no, it was at, a statement, already. Yeah, they looked at they looked at San Antonio. They looked at Dallas. Dallas. There were other conflicts. So what we can infer from that? Well, they didn't look at Austin. They didn't look at College Station. Um, now we got to look at this from a lot of different angles. Like one, there were limited dates where this game could get replayed. Absolutely. This is the game that was would have been played on August 27th at home. It would have been our home match versus North Carolina. Um, obviously got postponed because of Harvey. We have this week, um, in the middle of next week, we've got the women's FIFA break, and obviously neither team wants to play, no, play when, when you don't have your international players. Although to be fair, North Carolina's headed to first. We're not <laughs> making the playoffs. They could have played it and just played their substitutes and everybody would have been happy. Except it's not just U.S. players that are missing. That's yeah. true. That's that's true. that's, that's yeah. why, like, when Would you we add, even be able to feel the team at that point. Yeah, when when, when you <laughs> add it up, if it was just U.S. players, I was like, yeah, there's barely any missing. But then we when can, you look at five aside, right? Brazilians, Irish, uh, yeah, Australians, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So especially the Brazilians. So you've got limited dates where, where you can play. You're running into the end of the season. Um, so I, I understand from the logistic, the logistics point of view of how hard it is to find a date and find a venue for that. Now, what I wonder is, was it considered at all that that Wednesday night date be a double header? I know so, that's not I know that's not ideal, and so, I know you have a lot of ticket complications because of that. You you don't. And here's my thing. You can do it like an MLB day night double header. Granted, you're still not going to get really all that much attendance because you'd have to kick off the game pretty early. But, but be at home. But well, I say you kick you kick the dash game off at six or five thirty. Well even if the dynamo played later that night. Yeah. So you do dash three or four, that's where you're gonna run into some attendance problems. But it gives you enough break to so set up you for the dynamo. You actually but, you actually flip the venue as opposed to having one ticket. Exactly. But you have the option for really just season ticket holders is really where your where your prime value is going to be at. Say, hey, we'll give you this dash ticket for X amount of dollars, yeah. or really for Dynamo season ticket holders, if you don't give it to them for free. Yeah, yeah. it fills yeah. the place. You, dash, you, you dash expose fans, hey. new fans exactly to the team. Your costs are reduced from hosting a standalone game. Exactly. The team hasn't left town. You don't have travel costs. I, I, wa I want to believe that they looked at that and then just just decided that, no, that it, it's easier to do something else or it's more beneficial to do something else. And when I say beneficial, I mean from, from their perspective. Now, going to RGV, okay, that is our our younger brother of the Dynamo, yes. right? That That is an organization that we control, own? I don't we, I, I don't know the right word. We that. don't own them. <laughs> we control the technical aspects, the soccer aspects of okay. that organization. Yes. Okay, but we have a relationship in which we can negotiate a much better deal to use a Correct. venue than, than anywhere else, Correct. where you're basically an outsider coming in. Well, I feel like we probably could have negotiated just fine with BBVA. 
All I'm saying is no, that no. I mean, I, I meant, I mean, I, com I compared go, to I compared wanna, to going to Austin. Oh or going yeah, to correct. Station. Now I do yeah. want to go back to the double header idea because the Dynamo did that at one point, and if I remember correctly, open it was cup. yeah, open and cup. it was a midweek match, and it was right. Open Cup. But Open Cup, you have no, no season ticket holders have tickets to Open Cup. No. Correct. So what you do have to figure out if you actually did a Dash and Dynamo double header. All those lower bowl seats are taken for Dynamo season ticket holders. Your dash yeah, is you only lower bowl, so so you would have to fa you would have to factor in. It's like, well, are we going to piss off dash people by moving? But them see, up, that's up why or? you give the dash the dash season ticket holders. You, you count them a free ticket too. You're not going to hurt nothing. Yeah, yeah. You're, well, and, and on TV, it's going to look a lot better if you have. A full oh bowl. yeah. There oh, were. Yeah. The, the, I think the point to be made from that is that there were were other options on the table. And it's just a matter of whether the front office took the time to consider those. I'm going to actually throw something out there that I've been kind of considering and wondering if maybe this played a role into it. Harvey did hit during the middle of them trying to consider all this and think through all this. That has to be part of it, too, because they spent so much time dealing with Harvey-related stuff for their players, for the fans, out and about. Right. Oh, certainly. So, you know, that would certainly least, affect things. Yeah. And let's throw into it the league itself, which we know hasn't always been quick to get things oh, rescheduled. Yes. No. So let's let's look back to 2014, the first Dash season, where they had a game in New Jersey that had like a four hour lightning delay that they oh, finally called. And they kept postponing, actually rescheduling, mm -hmm. because it looked like the game wouldn't need to be played. It looked like neither team would have a chance at the playoffs. And then suddenly Sky Blue goes on a five game unbeaten streak. <laughs> yeah. And they have, to, they have to tack it on at the end of the season. Yeah. And it's that game where half the players left to go join their European teams. And, but you know, so we've seen from NSL, they haven't always been quick to announce things, quick to plan things. And, and obviously, Dash can't announce that unless they've gotten so approval. leagues approval. Then, then, Correct. then let me ask you this. From, from a fan perspective, where does this put the fan base? Because if I was a season ticket holder of the Dash, I'd feel extremely alienated. Especially because of the fact they said, oh, well, your ticket will be honored in RGV. I'm sorry for a midweek game. I'm not driving to Rio Grande Valley. And, and clearly they have no expectation that anybody would drive r drive to the Rio Grande Valley on a freeway that I think still has issues because of but, Harvey. Oh, yeah, there's definitely but, issues. But the problem that. is... Yeah. You know, you already, and I, I hate to say this because I want to see the Dash pack whatever seats are available. But when you're already having attendance problems as it is, why would you go pull something like that? Well, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the devil's you know? advocate here because somebody has to be. So <laughs> RGV is an untapped area for women's soccer for the most part. Mm -hmm. And they do have a desire to use RGV to build up a women's academy down there. I have heard that as something that they want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know how accurate that is. Um, but if that is the case, then this kind of makes sense because you're bringing players that have some draw. Mm -hmm. And you get the possibility of maybe... You know, even if we're talking 15, 20 young girls see it as a possibility, then it's something maybe they latch on to and yeah, something yeah. you can build from. But at the same time, if you're... Too bad we don't have any Mexican national team players on either team anymore. God yeah. bless Ari. Yeah, <laughs> we miss you, Ari Romero and Teresa Noel. Well, wait. Well, Bianca, but she's not... Oh, Mexican thank you for saying that. Anymore. I'm sorry, yeah. No, she, she, is. Is. She, is. Okay. she is. She is. She is. See? See? Well, she hasn't. She's been <laughs> capped in a friendly, but she's not capped. I've been. She can't switch back. Yeah, she already once, did yeah. it. She already switched. Yeah, Thank you for saying once. that. Yeah. So, so technically, they do have a Mexican national yeah. team player. Technically, um, and you know, and at the same time, I mean, that's you know, it, it's they've got the Brazilians. That's got to be at least a little bit of a drawdown there yeah. too. You know. But 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 let's think bigger picture. Um, because I, I I think that's an easy argument to hide behind. Where we're okay, we're expanding Agreed. the brand. 100%. We're exposing. Agree with you. It's like, fine, you can make that argument, but at what cost to your season ticket holder base who already missed one home game? And we totally understand why. Yeah, I mean, let me put my season ticket yes. holder hat on. It's like, totally understand why moving up to Frisco makes sense. It was a charity match. It, you know, that's a long drive, but it's on a, it's on a, a long holiday weekend. I and there get were quite that. a few that did make that. This, yeah, this one, it, it's. Even if you have to make that tough call of like, we checked all these other venues and none of them can work and this is the only way that it'll work. To me, what really got me seeing that release yesterday is how it was handled. That there wasn't even a statement in the yeah. original release that's, that said, look, we recognize that this isn't the best news for season ticket holders, but this is what had to be done and this is what we're willing to do for fans. So, so instead they just put out, okay, it's rescheduled. 
there was a huge backlash that could have been prevented and, and then, then they came then they came out with this, the statement and but it's even just the the compensation they offered dashes and ticket holders i mean is that really the best they could do well and, and this you can is exchange this is, it for it what was it was it two dynamo tickets or one no, you, it you, it's basically one form. You could have a Charities Cup ticket, or yeah. you could have tickets for the last home game, which is on September 23rd. Yeah. Now, the thing is, the the other reschedule, the other reschedule is already an exchange for September yeah. 3rd. So, I'm one person. I don't need three tickets. I I'm getting one game instead of three. There's not necessarily a value in that. I don't necessarily have an interest as a Dash fan in going to see Dynamo versus Cruz Azul yeah. when I know that it'll likely be the B team. On both sides. Yeah, because they scheduled that at the wrong time. Yeah, you know. International break is around well, that, that time. That's, that's the only time you know. you're going to have, that's yeah. the only time they're going to be able to bring those clubs yeah, exactly. in. exactly. You know, so to me, it's, it's unfortunate, I, I hate to say this, it's, it, it's a, a sign of the, the level of disengagement that, that we've seen from the Dash front office a lot this year. And it breaks my heart to see that because anybody that knows me knows me how how knows how long I have followed women's soccer, how passionately yes, I follow absolutely. women's soccer, how I was in tears when I heard the announcement that we were getting a women's soccer team in town. So oh, that was you too? <laughs> so, then, so, me... so, th so that it's like these little things that are all avoidable. And this isn't something that's specific to the Dash. No, this isn't specific no. to women's no, soccer. No, no, I've we've seen, we, it. We, we, we've I've seen this seen in it other Houston clubs. We've seen this in pro sports all over this. We've seen this in Dynamo Definitely seen it things. with the Dynamo. Definitely. I mean, you we've know. had instances where, now they haven't had to cancel a match and then reschedule it for later and then reschedule it for a totally different venue. But they have had to, I mean, they've had instances where fans have been at a stadium for three, four hours and the streets all around BBVA are completely flooded. That was the time I walked to the conservatory without I, shoes because it was flooded. Was that I mean, the Man City game? No, no, it, it was, was a RSL match. match. Yeah, it was, it was, was it last match. year or the year before? It was, yeah, yeah it, was, it was one of the two. And it, yeah. and it was, it was. we're talking, you know, inches of water across every street downtown, across everywhere around the stadium. And, you know, the, they continue to use the, the, the statement that MLS makes those final decisions. I understand that. But at the same time, there has to be someone in the front office that can stand up to NWSL and say, this is for the good of our fans. Yeah. This is necessary for us from a public affairs standpoint. We need to make a decision and we need to make a statement so, now. We can't afford to wait. Let me, let this me is ask hurting you. our brand and the brand of the Houston Dash right now is as fractured and as hurt as it has ever so then been. Let me ask you this, Jen. If you had to put your finger on the pulse of the Dash as a healthy or non-healthy organization, where do they lie? I mean, is it an organization that can last another four more years under its current? How do I well, well yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it can definitely, it can definitely last. I think, I think the issue is let let's look at what's different in 2017 from 2016. Yeah. Okay. There is no one in charge of the dash. No. no. Okay. So, so Brian Ching stepped away. Mm -hmm. It was never officially announced. No. It we was never, we well. never got a reason why. No one stepped into that place. Other dash roles have been folded into other dash roles. Um, you know, they fired Randy, and we we knew that was coming, and took on an interim who, you know, he's he's had some wins, but we basically took on a coach that has a C a C license, yeah. who would not be qualified um, in any any other league to. To, to, to be the head coach. So, 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 and I know there's financial decisions behind that. Yeah. Just like men's soccer, you know, just like the Owen Coyle thing. Yeah. yeah, they waited until he had somewhere else to go so that, okay, now we can part ways and we're not, we're not sitting on his contract. So you're Unfortunately, saying Unfortunately, that didn't happen with, with Randy. So you're saying there's an opening and I've been in the Houston area for long enough to know. Why aren't you in that position? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, well, no pressure. Okay, one, one. My point is there is no opening. Okay, that's that. that that's my point. They've, they, yeah, the, the, that position has been closed. Um, two, I'm running for president of FIFA, so Dash Dash GM is kind of beneath me. Okay, well then, I know who gets my vote if I had a vote. <laughs> okay, but, but my my point was that there, there's not an opening. There's not a GM. Yeah. And we did also lose at the end of last season. We lost the VP of marketing for the Dynamo yeah. and the Dash. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. She was not she was replaced good. as a marketing person. Um, it, and instead, we now have a VP of sales separate from VP of sponsorship. And yes, those are very important things. But I think we've 
lost something Maybe in the marketing. Maybe that's a, another issue kinda... that I have on the outside looking in. When it comes from Dynamo or the Dash, the marketing on both sides are horrible. You know, I'm I, not even talking quality. I'm talking yeah. quantity well, just, and, and exactly and just someone like, in general. So yeah. I was at the yeah. I was at the U.S. watch party for the last qualifier, and there was a guy who was in town for the Coast Guard for obvious reasons, and he's from Portland. He said their sports talk there, number one, is Seahawks, and then nothing but Timbers, and um, you know a little bit of NWSL. Yeah. But it's the fact that their marketing also. It's nonstop. It's on TV. It's everywhere. Right. Okay. It, so I'm gonna because it's because it's easy to go. Oh well, it's Portland. It's like no, they're still making that happen. But they're, they're, but they're like soccer, making that and that's happen. the difference, right? Is but they're that soccer Merit, USA. That's the difference. Merit is willing to put the money into it, and I hate to say it, but Gabriel Brenner is not. No. I mean, I hate to throw it that simple, that easy, but I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you can't. Until he until he puts the money in, and and he may be putting it in different ways. I can't speak to that one way or the other i don't know him personally and i don't know it on that level but from what i have seen from what we can see publicly, from what mm -hmm. we can infer publicly it is very easy to tell that his attention is on the dynamo whereas when it comes to Merritt paulson he is 50 percent both ways yeah, but he doesn't split hairs women's soccer is a hotbed of interest outside of josh um you know it's <laughs> i there, no don't get me wrong i love men's soccer but Men will lay on the ground for ten minutes after they're getting breathed on wrong. Yeah. Women get busted in the face, blood dripping down, and they'll still play in a World they Cup. They keep playing even after World shaving World accidents. <laughs> exactly. They will you wrap know. their heads and go back <laughs> on the pitch and keep playing. I've but seen. It's, it's, and then have their heads stapled. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's or, one of those. They go out on the pitch Abby with Wombeck. little things in their nose. Yeah. You need to see the video of Abby Christy, Wombeck having her head stapled. It was Sammy Mueller yeah. during yeah. the last. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's one of those. It's not that women's soccer is bad. It's one of the most interesting. You know matches the watch just don't ask josh yeah just don't ask josh um but it's it's one of those they need to market to that women's soccer especially women's youth soccer is huge and so. and, and i like that you bring that up because one of the things i i heard this um from moya dodd who's you know now on the fifa executive mm -hmm. committee australian woman played you know, play yes, for australia yes, back yes. in the day Amazing this person. this this is so brilliant how she said it she's like women's soccer is a startup business if you're running a startup business, what do you do? You spend every freaking day on that business. Yeah. So she's like, what does FIFA do? They hold a one hour meeting once a month and go, oh, look what we did for women's soccer. Yep. yep. We're, it's we're more, so great. You know what it is? It's it's a, as far as FIFA is concerned and as far as some MLS clubs and MLS areas are concerned, it is a charity case more than it actually is a company. But and, 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 and I think that was one of the flaws with, with WSA. It's like, you can't have it be a business and a cause. It's one or the other. It's got to be a business. It's yes. got to be run, but let me it's also be throw run out like there. a business. You know, in, in my Houston hoedown, who do I cover more of at the professional level? There's three women's teams yeah. that are technically on the professional level. Yeah. Houston Aces, uh, Texas Titans, and um, I always forget the third one. What? No. No, not Dutch Line. Uh, uh, TTI Blue Bonnets? Yeah, TTI. No, yeah. not no, TTI. No, 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 There's no, no. another. Uh, one plays out. South uh, Select? There you go. Yeah, okay. South Select. Sorry. They're the ones I always forget. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, three technically professional teams that play here in Houston. There's I disagree one. with you on that. But anyway. Semi professional. Well, Semi professional. Yeah, yeah. They can't be professional teams by definition because they have college players in there. That's so, true. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. What's yeah, called, yeah. it's what's called yeah. pro am. But it, yeah. but, it, but it is like it's organized, exactly. serious I guess that's what women's professional professional ish league. We'll call yeah. it that. Professional ish league. <laughs> Which unfortunately, they did, all three of them did not have the greatest seasons this year. But but that's yeah yeah. But I I think. My frustration, and, and I, I believe that a lot of fans would have the same frustration, as is we know it's a great game to watch. We know it's affordable. We know the players are awesome. We know we're, we're leading up to, like, next year's Women's World Cup qualifying. Yep. And then you got the Women's World Cup, and we've got these players in Houston, and we're not capitalizing There's on no this push. amazing thing me. we have. No you have the female equivalent to Messi playing in your city. Why not market the hell out of that? And, and she she actually is a ticket mover. So when you say attendance problems, it's like anytime they go, hey, Carly's at this game, they, they see it yep. up to Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like our numbers have been pretty solid this year for what marketing we're doing. Oh, and absolutely. The, and the fact that our first three games were early afternoon 
kickoffs. Yeah, Those are brutal. Those are the only early afternoon games no we've ever match had. No in Houston, they whether were, it's men or they women. They were brutal. So, like, the TV people are asking me, like, why is there no one in the stands? I'm like, they are. They're all in the shady side <laughs> or in the bar. Unfortunately, where they have the camera, yeah. you can't really yeah. see all like, the those, those games were brutal. And it's, yeah. it cracked me up that Eddie Robinson was like, what's wrong with people? We played in the heat. Kind of like, Eddie. You never played a one o'clock game at Robertson or BBVA, honey. I did no, see that back and forth. No. But, that was funny. Like, and, and <laughs> once the, once they played that like two o'clock kickoff with LA in 2012, like maybe our second game at, yeah. at BBVA, they never played an afternoon game yeah. again because because yeah. David Beckham got a little sick. Oh yeah, yeah. So, I yeah. remember that. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I don't I don't think it's a matter of the dash staying. I think it's I I hope maybe. With the Dash and the Dynamo combined, that maybe Gabriel Brenner sees like this could be better. This could yeah. be done differently. Even if you're not gonna spend oodles and oodles of money, you yeah. can still spend the money in a different way. Because I, I feel like we keep making these cost-saving measure, measures that save us money right now it's, it's, that end up losing us money down the line. And I think that's same a, for Dash and Dynamo. Agreed. There needs to be a long-term vision focus and not a short-term planning focus only. You should not be planning short-term moves in order to make ends meet. You should be planning long-term because the fact of the matter is, if you're planning short-term, all you will or have is short-term. Mm -hmm. If you are planning long-term, yep. you if are we planning keep, if to we, continue. If we keep being reactive, we're only going to react. You have to be proactive. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And, and, it's and the that, same in business. And, then it, and that announcement yesterday was... It was here's our very announcement. reactive. Yeah, and then they, yeah. then they had to push out the statement because we're all like, what? It, it, it's a short-sighted you know, thing, and it's it's not the first time we've seen it, and it's not the first time we've seen it from the Dynamo, it's not the first time we've seen it from the Dash, it's not the first time we've seen it. And with the timing Houston is Clubs really, really unfortunate yeah, as, as you're going into your, your, your final absolutely. home game. Um, but, what, what is an exciting time? And they time? had generated so much goodwill for all the efforts during Harvey mm -hmm. that the players had made. You and, would have and had Jeanine, the, Becky the, doing a great GoFundMe oh, she and did all amazing. that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, and, and so you generated all this goodwill, and in a matter of a week, and really in a matter of a few hours, you lost almost all of it with your fan base. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just a shame. And it shows that they really need somebody from a public affairs standpoint a public, you know, uh, marketing, to, you know, yeah, marketing, marketing standpoint, and and that falls to marketing, but marketing is a little bit different. You so, have so, to have somebody so, so that manages goes, the some, message. Yeah, someone that goes, key. yeah, you can't send that. Yeah, press somebody release that's out. actually <laughs> truly managing the message and saying, this is really, we should be framing it this way. Yeah. We should be thinking about yeah. these things. There is an actual people cost associated with this, not just a financial cost. Yeah. And I feel like that's where maybe they're missing the mark is on that people cost as opposed to the financial cost. And just, it, it, it's the little things. Like um, the meet, meet the team date for the Dash was originally scheduled for next Tuesday. And when I got the email, I was like, they scheduled it exactly at the time of the U.S. women's game, which <laughs> tells me that the national team players won't be won't there. Won't be there. That's, and and will, would they have the game on TV? At, at the event. So that I, is a discussion for another podcast too. But, but, I, but I reached out to them and, and, they're, and, 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 and they're, 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 they're like, hey, thanks for that. And, and I think because of the storm they had to reschedule, but it's that kind of thing. It's like someone's not paying attention to the correct, details. Correct, correct. Well, the, you know, it, it's, it's... Happy to come back and vent anytime. Oh. Let's see. We would love to have you on anytime you want. But that was, that was been part of my issue with NWSL and U.S. Soccer in general is they've done this conflicting thing. You have one promoting the other and the other not promoting back. <laughs> And it's <laughs> like the game in Houston in, in April. Oh, I'm walking around. And I was like, if I didn't know better, I wouldn't think there was a women's pro team in Houston because there's absolutely no Nothing. dash but, anything during the game. But your stars, there was no marketing, so there no, wasn't really your stars, anything going on, right? That's... No, but I mean, like even U.S. Soccer's push, yeah. it's, its promotions didn't mention no, that. No, no, not at all. But NWSL will jump on it, obviously, because it pushes ticket sales. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. it's not the other way around right. as it should be. Correct. Right. Right. Especially with the league and its infancy like NWSL. And and I've I've had the privilege this season of working on the lifetime broadcast. Yep. I'm I'm the editorial consultant for the broadcast team. I do a little bit of support for the streams and mm. it is great to see how they have worked out a very friendly relationship. Um broadcast wise so they are normally you would not see one channel say hey next week the u.s women are going to play on this on another channel they're just like we're just trying to get fans to connect yeah and here's all the ways they can yeah, see it that makes total because sense. because they know on that fox broadcast and on that espn2 broadcast ali wagner and, and julie fowdy are talking nwsl correct mm -hmm. so like they're, they're it's thinking big picture like thing. that it's yeah a totally organic yeah thing. now if only the dash could catch on with that well <laughs> 
<laughs> Crazier things have happened, maybe? This is true. Anyway. Well, if they'd ask us, they wouldn't. <laughs> well, maybe I've been to many problems. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Just, kidding. Just kidding, guys. Just kidding. Well, Jen, uh, we'll... We'll get the third wheel back on here so you so, can close so off the So first show. of all, actually, yes. you, you, you never took guys. a lot of time. <laughs> that's okay. We were totally prepared for that. So first of all, where can they find you? Yes. On oh, Twitter, that's where I was getting next. All right. They can find me on Keeper Notes. Uh, Keeper all one words. All one words. All one word. <laughs> um, also at Mix <laughs> Zone, sure which is my women's soccer too. podcast. Yes, it and is. that's Mix Zone with two X's, you know, like it's two X's, fantastic. double X chromosome. It, it is great. Um, and if you need, I gotta say it, you need the Dynamo, the Dash merch, you gotta come to my store in the village. Yes, we made right. it through the flood. I still have right. numbers that I have to get picked oh, up yes. for my yes. for my Gold Cup kit. <laughs> yes, they're still sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I have a little bit of stuff on capernotes.com, but usually Twitter. She didn't say it, but it's like, soccer for all. She didn't yes. actually oh, say I the didn't? word soccer for oh, all. Oh, I had soccer She's for like, all. She's like, my store in the village. There <laughs> is, store. There's, there's Rice Village. Is the one on off Highway 6 still there? No, that one's no, closed, okay. yeah. Because that's the one I would go so, to after Spring, school. the Woodlands, Missouri City, Paraland, Rice Village. The Paraland one is like Woo! two minutes for me, too, by the way. There you go. It's fantastic. Well, we'll take a quick break, get Sean on, or get Josh Sean on, close on. out the show. On. Sorry. <laughs> Again, thank you, Jen, for joining yes, us. Yes, thank you so much. It. We will have Last you back minute. for sure. Yes. It was awesome. But we'll go to break. Good stuff. You guys see more?